assassination before it happened. Rose Jeremy knew that the president was going to be assassinated. We'll return in a moment with more shocking revelations about who murdered JFK. The conspiracy to assassinate President Kennedy had been brewing in Dallas days before the president arrived. The Warren Commission would later overlook this evidence. Obviously, so did the FBI and the Secret Service. But there were people who knew what would happen. One of the most chilling episodes in our story takes us to a desolate Louisiana back road, two days before the assassination. A waitress who worked at the Seamier bars in Dallas and New Orleans French Quarter, Rose Cheremy, knew many underworld characters. Her employer in Dallas was Jack Ruby. Rose Cheremy was taken to Louisiana State Hospital, where she was later interviewed by the chief of psychiatry, Dr. Victor Weiss. Now for the first time, Dr. Weiss reveals Rose Cheremy's startling story. Rose Cheremy arrived at East Louisiana State Hospital on the 20th of November. She was treated on that unit for rather minor injuries from being thrown from the car. She quite openly and readily told a number of the staff, including the doctors attending her, that she was aware the president was going to be assassinated. Kill him. I gotta get out of here. I can't be part of this. You gotta listen. Okay, let's give it a shot. No, you Rose Jeremy knew that the president was going to be assassinated, and that it was common knowledge in the quote underground in New Orleans that this was to happen, that the contract had been let. You gotta listen to me. You gotta listen to me. I must say in all honesty that I think she had some knowledge of something that was transpiring and had transpired. I had a tendency to believe her story. They're gonna kill the president, damn it! Now it's gonna be just fine. Incidentally, the two men that threw her out on the highway were returning to Dallas. It is now November 21st, 1963. For over 1,000 days, John Kennedy has held the office of the presidency. On the night before he's assassinated, the president and his wife arrive in Fort Worth, Texas, continuing his goodwill tour of the state. On the last night of his life, the president is left unguarded while his Secret Service men investigate nightlife at Fort Worth Cellar Club. So, who's guarding the president, boys? Hey, don't ask me. Everybody's here. Hi. They showed up about 1 o'clock and uh, proceeded to uh, just have an awful lot of fun. I'm with a press. Every place that the president goes, the city supplies two firemen to put on each floor of the hotel in the event of a fire. And if all the Secret Service guys were down here in, in this club playing, that still leaves the two firemen on each floor of the hotel protecting the president because all the Secret Service guys were there. They partied with Dallas strippers, including some from Jack Ruby's Carousel Club who joined in the festivities. As the party heated up, so did tempers. While the president slept, his secret service men continued their party. It began to break up around 5, 5.30. Everybody was just having too much fun. It is the morning of November 22nd. The president will live less than four more hours. It is now 11.37 a.m. The presidential entourage has arrived in Dallas at Love Field. The waiting crowd is enthusiastic. The president and first lady bask in a warm reception from the people of Dallas before leaving for a planned luncheon at the Dallas Trademark. 
With thousands lining the streets, the presidential motorcade slowly makes its way through downtown Dallas. It will be only a matter of minutes before he arrives at the trademark. I was on Simmons Freeway earlier, and even the freeway was jam-packed with spectators waiting their chance to see the president as he made his way towards the trademark. The president's car is now turning onto Elm Street. And passes by the Texas School Book Depository. There are at least two questions here that were never answered. Why didn't anyone listen to Rose Sheramy? Why wasn't Oswald under active surveillance? The FBI knew he was potentially dangerous. They had a file on him, and they knew he was in Dallas. A special report from Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Jack Anderson. We stand today on the edge of a new frontier. The frontier of the 1960s. How many men pulled the trigger? How has this conspiracy been kept secret for 25 years? And why are people still being threatened and killed for what they know? Who murdered JFK?